Before I start this video, I just want to thank Dadaiku for partnering with me to make this video possible. Dadaiku is the platform for everyday AI. What I love about them is they make managing data and AI so easy that non-coders can be autonomous with their data prep analytics. And coders can only step in for fancier, more interesting problems to solve. But more on that at the end. How does a few pins on a map end up becoming the biggest crime tracking system in the US? This is a story of how Comstat was born, a system that pushed police departments to become more data-driven, which changed the course of law enforcement in New York City. To understand the significance of this, we first have to go back 40 years. The bloodiest year in the history of New York. The New York preliminary murder rate that released today is 1,784 homicides. And we're starting off the new year with at least 10 murders in the in city In the 1980s, today. New York City was a lawless place. Crime had reached epidemic proportions. Over 2,000 murders and 600,000 serious felonies committed every year. The city seemed beyond redemption, but there was one person who saw it differently. And if given the chance, he believed he could fix the city. His name was Jack Maple. Jack Maple plotted every single crime onto a map. Each pin represented a single crime, color-coded and marked to represent the time of day and the different crimes. That allowed him to find patterns in a way looking at raw numbers simply could not. It also allowed him to be one step ahead of the perpetrators. Jack called them the charts of the future. But not everyone understood them. So still going at it. Man, fuck that guy. His old transit cop acting like he runs his place. A hundred bucks says? He gets canned within three months. Yeah, more like two. Hey, I wish I could do arts and crafts all day too. <laughs> Man, ridiculous. Lieutenant, what is this? It's what's gonna save this city, Bill. Come here. See these green pins? Wolfpack robberies. Same time, same place every night. And this? It's uh, pickpockets in Times Square. Mm. I'll follow the red pins. Move to downtown on West 4th. Mm -hmm. Every afternoon. What are these? Purse snatchings. Notice anything? Same train line. And at the same time, too. See, with Jack's map, crime patterns were visualized, meaning they could be predicted. Those yellow pins on the map, they let the police know where and when they'd catch the next purse snatching. Turns out, it was just one guy's doing. Once he was in cuffs, poof, no more yellow pins on the map. With Jack's charts of the future, the NYPD realized most of the crimes in their city were actually done by a small percentage of people. Track them, understand them, and arrest them. It's time we start fighting crime, not just responding to it. And just like that, felony crime in the subway dropped 30% in two years. Outside, New York City was still a cesspool, but the subways were safer than ever before. In 1994, New York City got a new police commissioner, Bill Bratton. He'd seen what Jack Maple had accomplished with the charts of the future, so he wanted him to do the same thing, but this time for all of New York City. So he made him his deputy, and together they would turn the charts of the future into what we know today as Comstat. On every precinct to track every single crime that happens daily. And every robbery, every murder, even a sneeze, and I want to know about it. And then nothing slips through the cracks. We need to hold our own people accountable. They already report them to the commissioner. And things have been pretty quiet. 
Quiet. Quiet. We've already had 30 murders this week. Last year, we had 1,946. The quiet my ass, this is the murder capital of the fucking world. They're ignoring cases. All right, police departments just won't tell you about it. We need to force them to take every single crime seriously from now on. Well, if they're keeping the bad news away from the commissioner, aren't they gonna do the same to you? Well, then we gotta force it out of them. How are we gonna do that, sir? I'll just kindly ask them, of course. Lots of robberies in the 5th Precinct. What's going on, Commander? A lot more heroin up there, sir. Really? No kidding. Where is it? It's, uh... Well, where's it coming in? Who's dealing? We haven't really... And how do you know that it's the, uh, heroin addicts that are doing these robberies? Well, as I said before, we have an active investigation. Huh. Well, what does that mean? Now, tell me exactly what that means, hmm? Now, you woke up in the morning, you went to work. What exactly did you do to catch these guys? If you don't got answers, I sure as hell will find someone who does. Dismissed. Last year, we recovered $800,000 from the BOA robbery. Six months ago, the four-year-old son of a world-renowned pianist was found thanks to us. Now we're working on our biggest homicide case yet. That's what we do. We don't have the resources nor the time for these low-level cases. Where do you live, Commander? I don't see how that's Clarkstown, right. Clarkstown, or one of these places. What'd you pay for your house? 300000 350 Got a nice little police department there, huh? <laughs> now, wouldn't you be on the phone with the Clarkstown fucking cops? And wouldn't you want these crackheads arrested? And if they said to you, oh, gee, sir, don't you understand? Uh, they're just low-level guys. Uh, we're working on a big case. And we'll be done with that big case in about, I don't know, a year. Would that be all right if your children were stepping on crack vials on their way to school? No, sir. Why the fuck would it be all right for your precinct? Police chiefs hated Comstad, from the meetings to the data reporting, but that forced them to take every single crime seriously. Because of that, the crime rate in New York City plunged. Only a year after Breton took over, the murder rate dropped 25%. A year after that, 40%. Comstad worked. It revolutionized the department and became a symbol of police accountability. Things were going well for New York until people who didn't understand the machine started running it. When Jack stepped down in 1996, people started using Comstat as a management tool, setting impossible numbers to hit. Rather than making the city safer, it became a numbers game. Year after year, the crime rate would go down. But what was really behind those numbers? Apparently, due to the immense pressure to lower the crime rate, police chiefs started fudging the numbers, downgrading crimes, or even stopped reporting them. For some, it was the only way not to get fired. They were so focused on moving the metric, it no longer solved the actual problem. We have to remember that, behind those numbers and statistics are real people with their own individual stories, and no story can be reduced into a single number. That's why we'll always need the human element in a data-driven system to keep it in check. Comstat's data-driven approach remains a controversial one. 
On the one hand, it almost definitely led to smart policing and a safer city. On the other hand, it became justification for police abuses. Perhaps the answer is that like all machines, they can only be as effective as the people running it and the data that goes into it. Data is not a solution, but a tool to be used in the hands of responsible leaders. And that's where you come in. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this story, there are plenty more to discover on historyofdatascience.com. And you can even try to win the graphic novel, Innovators of Data Science, which tells the stories of the 12 people who had the most significant impact on the history of data science. On the website, History of Data Science, you'll learn how data science was used to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, how it was used back in the 19th century to fight cholera, what AI winter means, why the Dartmouth conference was so important and a lot more cool stuff. And this is all done by Dadaiku, which is a sponsor of this video. So about Dadaiku, it's a platform for everyday AI. It makes designing, deploying, and managing AI super easy. For me, since I was mainly doing analytics at Facebook, I think their analytics application would have been extremely helpful. I'm not a big fan of writing code just for the sake of writing code because it just slows you down. But with their platform, instead of writing custom scripts to clean your data, create pipelines and deploy your model, it's all in one easy to use platform. This way you can focus on solving more interesting machine learning problems. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.